Hey, Edward back here with another video just to teach you a little bit about the truth about the cost it takes to rent a property or the cost it takes to be a landlord. I get this question all the time. And let's get into it. Number one, how much is the amount of work required to do to be a landlord? Honestly, uh, property managers do get paid well, but they deal with a lot of hell. And, 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 and it's weird. The problems that are associated with rental properties are always immediate. My water heater's not working. The air conditioner's not working. I smell gas. You know what I mean? Like, uh, the, the front door is broken. My, I lost my key. Uh, all the crazy things that happen, you know, my neighbor's screaming, you know, when you're in an apartment complex, I get that, that call a lot now. It's a weird one. The neighbor's fighting, you know what I mean? What do I do? The neighbor's leaving trash in the front of their house, whatever. The landlord has to take care of all of those things. The roof is leaking, right? All these things are immediate. And it doesn't matter if it's a Sunday at six o'clock in the afternoon. If your AC is not working, you want that fixed now, not tomorrow, now. And if it doesn't get fixed now, you're going to get hell. So it's a lot of work and it's a lot of inconvenient work. So it's one thing if you just, you know, you punch a clock, you go in and then you leave at five and la la la, you go about your day. It's another thing, your, your clock is always punched. No matter what's going on, you're gonna get that call. I would say, one person can handle maybe uh, 20, 30 properties full time, but it's a full time job and it's an after hours job. You're talking 50, 60 hours a week and that's to keep it managed correctly. The amount of the amount of work that's required comes into also scheduling. So you're not scheduling just you to go do something. You've got to schedule the contractor, the tenant, you know, maybe the, the insurance company, maybe the appraiser to just do one thing when you're trying to work with a property, you know, and then the contractor doesn't show up or shows up late and then you have to reschedule and then you get hell from the tenants, you know, and then the contractor does it, tells you he did it right. And then it, it you know, two weeks later, it's not working. Then you got to call the contractor back. It's a lot of conflict when you're dealing with property management. It's just conflict related. It's a lot of budding heads. Literally today I had a uh, call where my heater's not working and my water heater's not working one day and they're brand new. These are not old. This, the, the heater, the, the AC unit, the package unit that I have, it's like six months old. The water heater is probably six months old as well. And they're not working. I don't know why, but they're not. Okay. And you know what? I've got to take care of it. It's on my, you know, it's on my little list of things that I got to do today. No one else is going to take care of it. Nobody else cares. And if you're managing your own property, you know you're dealing with this stuff, okay? Uh, the cost associated with it. Um, in investing, we generally say about 50%. 50% or 60% is the cost of having a property that rents. I'm not talking about principal and interest. I'm just talking about cost, taxes, insurance, repairs, management, all that jazz. You know, it all is all factored in here. And most people, they just look at, this is my payment. This is how much I'm renting for. I'm going to make the difference. In a perfect world, maybe. But we don't live in a perfect world. Stress involved. Now, I'm going to bring a, a, a quick story up. I had a, a, a seller that sold me one of his properties. And then um, he had a bunch of properties. I don't know how many properties he had. But he had a bunch of properties. He died. He was selling me another property. We called, uh, the, the daughters called us and said, we're not going to sell our father died. We're going to, we're going to keep these rental properties. Okay. You know, I'm not going to like, they're in a situation. I'm not going to add any more stress to it. Three months later, they call us back. Can you please take all of the rental properties off of our hands? Cause it's stressful, right? All the different problems. And when I sit there and talk to them afterward, and I got to meet the two daughters that inherited the properties. They were like, 
we did not know how much work this is and how much headache it is. You know, dealing with a contractor that comes and fixes it and it doesn't do it. And who do we call? I don't have a good, you know, Rolodex. All the millennials are like, what's a Rolodex? Like, I don't know. So there was literally like, I'm going to get into it now. There was literally like this ball of like small index cards and you would write people's names, numbers, addresses on there. So if you needed, and then what they did. So if you need somebody, you do it. Or we would call through the phone book, right? Like you ever wondered why businesses are named triple A, triple A records, triple A uh, body shop, triple A everything, right? It's because of the phone book. Because whenever you would go to body shops, the first business that would come up is the one that had the letter A. <laughs> it was like quadruple A, right? They would like, first it was A plus, then it was like, oh man, if I did double A, then I would get ahead of them and I would be the first thing. It's almost like an organic search engine. Okay. So, but the moral of the story is it's okay. You, you can manage your properties. A lot of people do it a lot of years, but realize what you're getting into. It's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of time. It's going to be stressful as heck. And you may, you may not want to make that investment into that. You know, a lot of people don't realize rental properties really, I say it, rental properties really don't make sense until you get over 10, right? Then you could 10 or 20. So then you can hire somebody. So that's pretty much it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found some information out of it. If you know somebody that might learn something from this video, share this video to them. And, and if, and if they end up selling their property, we'll give you $500 uh, referral fee. Or if you want more information or more videos like this, look through our YouTube channel or just call the number below 593-3300 and we'll go to your house and make you a cash offer right there on the spot. No obligation, no requirements. And, and I'll be happy to sit there and explain your whole property to you mathematically on paper if it makes sense to keep or sell. Thank you guys so much. God bless.